This is a Poke Press Special Report. Hi, I'm Stephen Reich here at the Poke Press PR and Studios in Madison, Wisconsin, and I'm on the phone with two co reviewers of the recently released Pokemon Collection for movie Blu ray. First, I have uh, Rich Walter, who some of you may remember from our Blu ray review last year. Uh, say hi, everyone, Rich. Hi there, everyone. And I also have Neil Lombard, who is a reviewer at DVDTalk.com, who's uh, graciously lent some of his time to, to give us a, a little bit of insight. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm a reviewer for DVDTalk.com, one of the more popular film review websites on the Internet. Uh, we review DVDs and Blu-rays primarily, but also theatrical releases. I'm equipped with a Samsung 1080p high-def display on uh, Denon receiver that's capable of all of the sound um, formats, Dolby True High Def, DTS High Def Master Audio, Uncompressed PCM, Clip Speakers. It's, you know, a good setup, good for reviewing, and um, have a lot of experience, so I have an idea of what the quality expectations are. Now, Neil, before we get uh, too far into it, did you get a chance to see either the fourth or fifth movie in theaters originally? Sadly, I did not. Okay. Um, I did get to see both. Um, I think, Rich, uh, you didn't get to see either, right? No, I wasn't a Pokemon fan at the time. Uh, All right. Well, anyway, this collection has all the Miramax-owned movies, 4, 5, 6, and 7, Forever, Heroes, Jirachi, Wistmaker, and Destiny Deoxys. So two of them are repeats from last year's Blu-ray, but... um, why don't we start off with the the first one uh, chronologically, Pokemon Forever? Neil, let's start with your impressions. What did you think of the overall technical aspects? Well, in terms of the technical aspects, uh, I was a little bit disheartened to see that it was treated the least favorably out of all four of the films. The transfer is definitely not an upconvert. I'd say it's high def, but very low quality. It's a poor transfer. And there's just a lot of softness to the image. There's still grain. It's it's just not very pleasing as an image. Uh, it's an improvement over the DVD. And if you only ever had the full frame DVD, well, obviously you're getting an instant upgrade. But it is still a little bit lackluster. It's the weakest of the transfers. And uh, Rich, would that is that your opinion as well? Um. Yeah. And I also felt as we talked about earlier, where it did seem a little stretched, actually, and not actually naturally put on the screen, I don't think. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, one other thing is that the the two new movies on this Blu-ray collection, including this one, both have uh, 5.1 sound. Neil, I know you have a, a surround system like I do. How did that, does that add to the experience for you? Well, absolutely. Um both Pokemon Forever and uh, Jirachi Wishmaker have the 5.1 surround sound, and I do think it improves the experience naturally. Uh, I was a little bit disheartened that it wasn't DTS as described on the case, and I was hoping and anticipating for lossless audio, but as far as matters go, it's a pretty decent experience. Certainly better than 2.0 audio, and it is very enveloping still. It's uh, better than I've heard Pokemon before. I have to agree there. Now, moving on to the fifth movie, Pokemon Heroes. Now, Rich, you remember seeing this on the uh, Blu-ray last year. It looked pretty much the same to me. Uh, Do you concur with that? I agree completely. Uh, One thing, though, is um, it doesn't quite sound as good. Um, You had a technical issue, Neil, when you were listening to it, like some hiss issues. Uh, Can you describe that? Yeah, I, I noticed really minor hiss from one of the speakers, and uh, I believe it was the center, and it was just really small. It was not a big issue. It wasn't throughout the whole film, but I do feel like there's some kind of slight audio error in terms of I'd never experienced this on any of my 2.0 films that I review. It's very unnatural to experience a problem like that. It was not a very grating one, but it is worth noting that it was not a perfect sound source for the 
I didn't notice too much, although I didn't watch the whole thing because I didn't really have time to watch all four movies, unfortunately. Um, I did watch uh, pretty much all of four and six, of course, since those were the two new ones. I did listen to a little of five, didn't really notice uh, that much. Um, maybe a little bit of hiss if you put your ear really close to the speaker. Otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. It's still got that blue color cast, unfortunately. I'm guessing that the original DVD transfer and the HD transfer used on the Blu-rays was just made at the same time back in 2003 or 2004, whenever the transfer was done. Um, if we move on to movie six, this is a really special one because this one, first of all, it's the first time this movie's uh, been in widescreen. Now, Rich, uh, did that really add to things for you? Uh, yeah, it does, actually, because this movie's always been displayed in America as a 4.3. So to have that widescreen experience, I believe, really adds to this film. You get to see a lot more than you wouldn't have in the 4.3 aspect ratio. It looks phenomenal on widescreen. Huge improvements. There's no question that people are going to be a lot more satisfied. Uh, it doesn't hurt. The transfer itself is a huge improvement. It's the best-looking one on the whole release. But in terms of the widescreen aspect, I mean, you're, you're getting more of the movie. You're getting the full experience. And if you only ever had it on the... Well, you know, anyone would have had it in full frame. So it's a huge upgrade. Yeah, I remember having a similar thing ha happen when I saw um, back a couple of years ago. Briefly, the second movie was on iTunes, um, and you could buy it or rent it in, in widescreen, and I think that definitely uh, helped things out there, too. So let's move on to the the last one, and this is another repeat from last year's Blu-ray. It's the Destiny Deoxys. Again, it's pretty much the same transfer. The unusual thing is that 6 and 7, they were never really released in theaters, so uh, do you think, Neil, is it possible that these were like designed for like a film festival or something? Do you know why there would be a film version of these to use for the Blu-ray? Unfortunately, I am not aware of whether or not masters were used for film festivals. I would assume that they had widescreen masters, but just decided at the time, perhaps, that it wasn't um, as in demand. It was before the advent of you know, the mainstream advent of high def televisions. I mean, now that everyone has Blu-ray players and high def DVDs, and by everyone I mean a wider margin of people, uh, it just seems more possible for something that's considered family-friendly Pokemon to finally get it the treatment that it deserves. All right, and then, um, so Neil, going on to this, you, now you didn't notice the uh, hiss issue on Movie 7 like you did with Movie 5, is that correct? No, I did not. Correct. All right, so, Rich, it looked pretty much the same to you as it did on the, on the old Blu-ray too, right? Yes, it did, and I actually watched this one all the way through on my heroes were like you, I didn't have the time to watch it and I only watched part of it. All right. So overall, you know, it's a four movie collection. Um, Miramax actually puts out a fair number of these four movie collections and uh, a lot of them actually have that issue where some of them are in 5.1, some of them are in stereo, much like uh, this one. Um, but overall, if you, I know DVD Talk has sort of a, a rating system. Why don't you go into that a little bit, Neil? Um, as far as a rating system, we tend to rate movies from, well, technically you can get zero stars if you're going to be really harsh, although very few people do that, but um, from one to five stars. And um, we rate both the audio and the video. It's kind of, an, this is an average quality Blu-ray release if you're comparing it to other titles and releases that are available on the marketplace. However, as far as the company itself goes, Echo Bridge, uh, I was a little bit surprised that they put as much of an effort into this release. Uh, I had very low expectations. Uh, the transfers <laughs> were uh, decent, if not altogether good, on Jirachi Wishmaker and Destiny Deoxys. And I think fans, considering this is a budget release, are going to feel very satisfied with the picture quality for the price, and certainly because it's the jump to widescreen. There is some issues of grain on, on some of the films, most notably the first two, Forever and Heroes, and, you know, some issues with contrast, but it's not, it's not so alienating that it uh, takes away from the experience. And, uh, Rich, what was your overall opinion of the collection? I think that 
overall, the Miramax movies are a great collection of them. Forever Heroes, Jirachi Wishmaker, and Deoxys. And I think the Blu-ray versions of them definitely makes it a better experience. And I think it is a must-buy. Yeah, you know, I was, um, you know, if you didn't buy last year's Blu-ray, you should definitely, in my opinion, consider this one. Because this is probably, you know faults and all. I mean, these, these they don't have any of the shorts for four, movies 4, 5, and 6, but otherwise, this is pretty much the best way, uh, technically speaking, to, to view these movies uh, that you're going to have for the foreseeable future. Um, so, Neil, I just wanted to touch on a, a few other things while we have you here. Uh, first of all, how does this uh, Blu-ray collection compare to other anime Blu-rays that you've uh, taken a look at over the over the years? Well, as I said, it's kind of an average quality release. I would say that it it is a little bit of a disappointment compared to some of the other releases available in overall quality. Um, in terms of value, I think it's one of the best values in anime Blu-rays that is currently available, um, which that is something to take into consideration. As the, uh, the two Australian uh, import Pokemon movies on Blu-ray, and those are higher quality, but obviously there's a much higher price tag um, involved. Even the DVD editions of these movies typically go for more than what the cost is per movie for this release. And it's it's just an average release, pretty much. But go in with expectations that you are getting these films in widescreen. They are better than DVD. It's still high def, even if it's not perfect and you get a pretty satisfactory release. That's my opinion. All right. And one other thing I wanted to, to ask both of you. Uh, recently in Japan, they have a TV show called Pokemon Smash, as I'm sure many of the listeners are aware. And uh, for the 15th anniversary of the anime in Japan a couple weeks ago, they did a special thing where they restored the original episode. They went back to the original um, film stock, and uh, you know, cleaned it up and stuff like that, and presented it in high definition. Rich, do you think is that something you might be interested in if uh, if they bring it over here to, as a maybe a Blu-ray product or something like that uh, to to see? I would definitely buy something like that. The original Pokemon didn't look the greatest because of the age it was released at, and I think an HD version in America would look amazing. And uh, Neil, how about you? Um, do you think uh, this is something that, that's worthwhile for them to try and put out uh, with more episodes, hopefully? Or is maybe this um, something that's best left in the past? Um, I absolutely feel that it would be a really wonderful thing to see Pokemon in high def. I know that would probably take a lot of effort on the part of everyone, but I think it would be extremely worthwhile. And I think that fans would be willing to purchase it. I have the Australian season sets, uh, um, actually not all of them, but, a, but a, a big percentage. And those are, in my opinion, more impressive than the American releases were. However, uh, as it goes, standard definition just doesn't compare to high definition. And Pokemon, the quality of the early episodes really did suffer from a lot of um, video issues, most notably compression. And seeing in high definition would be really wonderful. All right. Well, thank you very much to both of you, uh, Rich and Neil. It's been great having you on and get some uh, different opinions about this set and some of the other, hopefully, uh, high definition goings on within the franchise. Thanks, Stephen. I hope to be back again soon. And uh, Neil, thanks to you as well. Thanks, everyone. I uh, really appreciate being able to speak about this release. Uh, before I go, I have one more final suggestion to make. I know not everyone might think it's worthwhile, but you can easily get Blu-ray replacement cases that are multi-disc. If you already own the DVDs and you want to maintain the short films and keep it all in one package, uh, I happen to be someone that really appreciates it when they do DVD and Blu-ray releases that are combo packs. Uh, you might consider purchasing this Blu-ray, buying a replacement case, tossing in your old discs, and there you have a complete package. I absolutely would not consider passing up this release just because it is not including the original short films. That is a minor detractor, but I think that it's absolutely worth the value, and I appreciate the time you've been spent talking about this release. 
All right, well, thank you very much. This has been Stephen Reich from the PokePress PR and Studios in Madison, Wisconsin, on the phone with Ritz Walter and Neil from DVDTalk.com, talking about the latest Pokemon Blu-ray collection. This has been a PokePress Special Report.